Praise God Amen. to uplift one another right. as we lift up the name of our Lord. I just want to uh, quickly just thank all of our brothers that have led in our worship, uh, doing an outstanding job. We're so very grateful for what you do. And uh, we're thankful for all of you for participating Amen. in this morning's worship as well. Uh, I want to get you back to James, the chapters one. James, the chapters one. Uh, this morning, I want to talk to you from a lesson entitled, entitled Being Put to the Test. Right. Being Put to the Test. If you're back in James in the, in the first chapter, I want to reread what our brother already read for us. The Bible reads, beginning with verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mm. When we hear the word test, our mind goes a number of ways. Uh -huh. Goes all over the place. Just by hearing the word test. But one way that it does not go most of the time is joyful thoughts. Uh -huh. It's definitely not joyful. Some of us get what we call test anxiety. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us experienced it in elementary school. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like tests. <laughs> I strongly dislike tests. I'm trying to avoid using the word hate, <laughs> but I strongly dislike tests. Uh -huh. I can't stand them little scantron, <laughs> bubbling the letter sheet. I can't, I can't even stand to see them sheets. When, you, when the teacher pulled them out, something went all over me. I was terrified. I, I, I overthought everything. I hate bubbling the letters because I go outside the line and I, it's too much. It's too much. I get stressed out. I don't like them things. I don't like when the teacher say pop quiz. Don't be springing nothing on me. Don't be surprising me. I need to know in advance when it's going to be a quiz or a test. I need to know. Don't be springing nothing on me. You know what I mean? So this started from, from elementary for me. You know what I mean? And, and then it just goes on throughout my life. I, I don't like medical tests. I don't like nothing to deal with the uh, uh, doctor's office or the hospital. I, I like to just go in and leave, I, you know. But once you want to start probing and drawing blood and come on, man, it's too much. I don't like it. You know what I mean? So this is all throughout my life, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I do not like it. I don't like tests. And then it's just some of them, I just don't know why they got to do it the way they do it. You know what I mean? Just like the COVID test. Why you got to run that thing all up to my brain, man? <laughs> Ain't no other way to do this. You know what I mean? And then I know our ladies as well as some of my, our, 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 especially our ladies. Some of the stuff you got to go through, I, man, I, I can't uh, relate, but I, oh, Lord. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, our sisters, they, they go through something, fellas. But all these tests, y'all, and we wonder why do they got to happen the way they do? Is there some better way? But let's be real, y'all. Nothing good seems to come to mind. Nothing positive. Nothing nothing. Uh, uh, brings out confidence, a confident reaction yeah. when we think about tests. All right. God's word says that his people will encounter spiritual testing. Right. He tells us this is in his word. We will be tested. We will be tested. We will have a testing of our faith. Right. And like any other test, I don't feel warm and fuzzy well, well. <laughs> about hearing this in God's word either. All right. How are we supposed to react when God allows various trials in our life uh -huh. to test our faith? How are we supposed to react? <laughs> What's our natural reaction? I just told you how mine is. We want to be honest, right? Yeah. And as we look this morning at this text, at what James has to say, and I want to remind you that this is James. This is the half-brother of Jesus. Right. Yet in verse 1, if you just go back to verse 1, 
I think that we got to note the fact that he introduced himself as a bond servant. Yes, sir. This is the brother of Christ Jesus. He could have gloated. He could have beat his chest. He could have told everybody that, hey, that Jesus is my brother. But he didn't choose to do that. He humbly recognized himself as a bond servant of God and Lord Jesus Christ. This is who we're reading from this morning. This reading was designed to encourage believers. We are encouraged to be patient. Yes, sir. During our trials right. and to press forth through our trials mm -hmm. in spiritual maturity. Amen. I want you to know that the recipients of this letter were scattered Jews right. that had come to faith yeah. in Christ Jesus. Right. James here deals more so with the practice of the Christian faith yes, sir. Than, with it, than with its instructions. James tells his readers how to achieve uh -huh. spiritual growth right. Right. through walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Talking the talk. Right. Isn't that important yes, that we as believers, we as followers of Christ, don't just talk the talk, but that we walk the walk? Right. Followers of Christ must become confident. In order to stand firm, you have to be confident. Right. Also, we have to become compassionate. Right. We have to care about our lives. We have to care about other people around us and their life. Yes, sir. We got to be concerned about others, not just ourselves. Right. Another thing that James encourages is that we have to be active. Yes. Yes. We can't be sitting around as children of the Lord. Amen. We have to become active. We have to get busy. Yes. Amen. Amen. We don't have time to just sit there and chill. And then another thing that I like that James points out is our speech is, is supposed to become better. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm not saying how you pronounce words and all that stuff. I'm talking about your speech. You got to put some thought into what you say. You can't just be running your mouth no more. Right. You have to think about what you say. Yes, our words are strong. They're powerful. Yes. You can lift somebody up as well as take them down. Yes, we have to be uh, mindful of how we speak. And we also have to be humbly submissive. Right. We have to be humble Christians. Right. We can't be proud and, 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 and puffed up. Right. We have to be humble. Amen. And that's the only way we can be submissive to our Lord right. is if we live lives of humility. Right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. He dealt with what a Christian is, what they do, what they say what they feel and what they possess. Yes. That's important. That's important that we know what we do. Yep. That's right. We're not just like everybody else. Right. We have to know about what we do. We have to know about what we say. Right. We have to know about what a Christian feels right. and what we have within us. Yes, sir. These are all important Amen. qualities of a child of God. All right. The Bible gives us all sorts of examples of people that were tested. You can read it all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible, you had the people of God that went through something. Yes, they weren't easy lives. And that's what I love about the Word of God. It gives us everything. Yes, sir. You know, when we write something, we like to point out the good stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, think about the people that we, they, they, think about us if we wrote an autobiography. Yeah. Oh, 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 it'd be a bunch of lies in there. Oh, <laughs> It'd be a bunch of lies. I already know. I already know it'd be a bunch of lies. We will embellish on some things. Stuff will be getting, you know how them fish stories are. They get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how we would do. But I like the word of God. It, it don't leave nothing out. It tell you all the dirty stuff too. Life ain't all squeaky clean. And that's what the people of God, they went through trials. They were tested. So we ask ourselves, why do believers have to go through this? Why do believers have to get tested? That's why I want us to take another look at what James has to tell us on, about this subject. Yeah, we find in verse 2 of chapter 1 that we are required Amen. to count it all joy. Yeah, that's right. that's right. Oh, we are required. I want to let you know that the verb count here is, is, is used in the imperative mood. James here is issuing a command. That's right. He's commanding Christians to count it all joy. Count it all joy when you go through tests 
in your lives. And I'm going to get back to that. I know some of you are squirming already. <laughs> Count it all joy. And I stated, as I stated earlier, this is the polar opposite of our natural common reaction. <laughs> I would have much rather a James say, when you, when, you, when, you, when you come to these trials in life, when you're tested, just complain all you want. <laughs> That's what I wish James would have said. I wish James would have said, get upset, get mad, get angry. That's what I wish he would have said. I wish he would have said to get anxious throughout this test. But that ain't what he said. <laughs> James says, what you say, joy. <laughs> Count it all. That ain't normal. <laughs> that ain't normal, y'all. Let's be real. <laughs> Count it all joy. <laughs> Let's be real, y'all. And, 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 and if you look at the true meaning of this word, he's talking about pure joy. Amen. Pure joy. And then he, and then he, he, he goes on, James, and the, if it ain't hard enough to think about joyful things, he says do it all the time. <laughs> Count it all joy. Not just some of the time, but all the time, James. Come on, James. <laughs> but we got to understand this is how it is with God. Yes, sir. This is how it is with God. God goes against what's natural to us. Right. Say that again, brother. And ain't that the point? Yes, sir. God goes against what is natural to us. Uh -huh. James here is challenging our response. Yeah. He's challenging our response right. to the trials and tests yeah. of life. Good. Yeah. And like our brother pointed out this morning, Brother Glenn, you got to be eating God's word. That's right. We have to be growing, right? We have to be challenged on how do we respond. Uh -huh. Most of us, if we're asked to do something, our first thought is why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially with our young folk. Uh -huh. I didn't realize how much children say why until I had children. <laughs> I, and, and, and if they don't say it, they're thinking it. Uh -huh. You tell them to do anything. Why? <laughs> How come? Yeah. Why? Yeah. If you watch their face and say why, <laughs> they ain't got to open their mouth and you know they're saying why. <laughs> and you wanna, but you know what I mean? <laughs> and we the same way, aren't we? <laughs> right. Ask them to do anything. Why? <laughs> but you know, most folks, if they understand why they do what they do, they don't mind doing it. Uh -huh. They just want to know why they got to do it first. And that still don't make it easy, but it make it a little bit better, right? It make it a little bit better when you understand why you got to do what you got to do. All right, all right. But you know what I love about James? He doesn't give us an opportunity to ask why. Because well, well, sure. if you keep on reading, he serves up the answer in the following verses. Right, right, right. He says, the testing of your faith produces patience. Yes, the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And then he expands on it in verse 4. Says that patience needs to be activated. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are walking around and our patience hasn't been activated. Right. Your patience ain't turned on yet. You know who you are. You ain't got no patience. You ain't, and if you got something, you got a little bit. A lot of us are dealing with uh, patience hasn't been activated yet. James is saying your patience has to be activated so that we may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Right. You don't start to become complete. You don't start to become perfected and lacking nothing until you get some patience. Right. Patience. And unlike school, no two tests are the same. Right. No two tests are the same. You didn't get handed out the same test right. as everybody else. Right. And guess what else? Ain't no time limit on this test either. Oh, Everybody's test is unique. Everybody's test is specific to them. You know what I mean? No two people go through the same exact things. Although everyone's test is different, James is providing us with the general reason behind all of our tests. In other words, we may never know specifically why God allowed our health to dwindle. We may not know specifically why our children got sick. Oh. We may not know specifically why the Lord allowed our loved one to be taken from us. Yeah. We may not know specifically why the Lord allowed my money to get funny. Yeah. But we all go through these trials. We all have these tests yes, in life. Preach, man. But in general, we do know 
God's why behind any testing. All right. And thanks be to God, he doesn't leave us without any explanation. Right. We could be left with no explanation at all. Right. But he lets us know. Because you know, he created us to be inquisitive. All right. We people that like to ask questions, right? <laughs> God knows this because he created us. Right. That's why we ask why all the time. He knows this. He's our creator. Because yeah. we want answers. We naturally want answers. Mm -hmm. I want to know why. Therefore, he, he graciously gives us some meaning in life's testing process. The Greek word translated as trials means approving. All right. A proving. Mm -hmm. We are being proven That's right. in our trials. We are being proven. Verse 3 and 4 could be summarized as confirming that the testing of our faith is for our completeness, our perfection. Uh -huh. That means we fulfill the purpose that we've been given. All right. Basically, any trial that puts your faith to the test. Uh -huh. That's what testing our faith is all about. Any trial, I don't know what that is. It could be internal or external. All right. But we're all going through something. Amen. We all got to deal with something that's going to test your faith. Amen. God, uh, uh, in the midst of that trial, in the midst of that te test, you're being asked, do you really trust me? All right. All right. That's good. Do you really rock with me like you say you do? Amen. Anything that you're going through that's like that, I don't know what it is. It's different for everybody, like I said. Right. I don't know what it is you're going through. Yeah. I know what I'm going through. On, and I got to look at myself. I got to evaluate myself. Like we were talking about in class this morning. And I got to ask myself, is any of these things trying to pull me away from God? Come on, boy. Right. Right. Are any of these things that I'm battling trying to get me to question my faith in God? All right. All right. Think about the things you deal with. Are they making you ask that question? Are they making you behave like everybody else? Or are you behaving like a true follower of, of the Lord in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your test? That's what we got to ask ourselves. You know what? Spiritual immaturity is a big problem in the church. You look at all the churches that are struggling, and I, bet, I guarantee if you start sifting through the mess that's going on, it's a lack of maturity. That's a lot of the problems that we have. No growth. No growth. We, 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 we obey the gospel. We get baptized into the body of Christ and no growth. No growth. No maturity is happening. <laughs> how, how else are we going to be complete, made perfect, unless we mature? See, the, bi the biblical idea of completeness and perfection can seem a bit confusing to us, can't it? All right. It can get confusing. It, it can be mysterious to us. Yes, sir. In order to get a better understanding, let's compare it to bodybuilding. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people talk about bodybuilding over the years. <laughs> and I ain't going to claim to be no expert. That's why I had to look it up. <laughs> but according to medical research, and you can look this up online yourself, medical research says muscle size increases when a person continuously challenges the muscles to deal with higher levels of resistance or weight. All right. All right. This process is known as muscle hypertrophy. I hope I pronounced that right. Muscle hypertrophy. I'm going to say it slow. <laughs> I just learned this word a few days ago. <laughs> hypertrophy. I ain't saying it no more. Occurs. <laughs> it occurs when the fibers of the muscles sustain damage mm -hmm. or injury. Uh -huh. Hmm. Listen to this. The body repairs damaged fibers yes, by fusing them, All right. which increases the mass uh -huh. and size yeah. of the muscles. Right. Lord have mercy. Isn't that interesting? Yes, yes, yes. Did you catch that? God designed our muscles to build when there is resistance. Yeah. And the process on, actually includes the tearing right. of the muscle fibers, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, our creator doesn't operate the way we expect him to. Right. All right, boy. 
You see how God goes against what we think is normal? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. God said in order for your muscles, which he created, by the way, uh -huh. in order for them to get stronger and bigger, they got to have resistance. Yeah. They got to be able to take on more weight. They got to be torn yeah. in order to be repaired and made stronger. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Oh, that's ready. <laughs> but this tearing is just like testing. Mm -hmm. It's necessary for the big picture. Gaining muscle strength and gaining growth, we see the creator's pattern is all in this process. All right, all right. He is the creator, so he designed them in a, in a similar pattern. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. When you understand how they both work in the same similar instance, Mm -hmm. So as Christians, we desire to be like Christ, All right. to be the person he wants us to be. Yes, sir. We want to be a good Christian, don't we? Yes, sir. We want to be a good Christian. Yes. We desire to be a good Christian, All right. but that only comes with testing. Yes, sir. All right. So in order for us to become more like Christ, for order, for order for us to become more like our Lord, it's going to involve some tearing. All right, yes. Your load is going to have to increase. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have resistance in your life each and every day. That's right. Yeah, That's right. And for anybody that knows you work out, Come you got to keep on going. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You got you got to you got to have some endurance. You got to have some stamina. Yes, you got to keep on going. Yes, <laughs> like I said before, we ain't supposed to stay the same, folks. Right. Isn't it something when we look throughout the church and we look at ourselves and we see folks ain't growing? Right. They staying the same. Yep. You still acting the same. You still talking the same. Yep. You still walking the same. There ain't no growth. It ain't supposed to be like that. Yep. Why are we still talking about the same nonsense? Mm. Say that. Why are you still letting the enemy control your mind yep. and your speech and your thoughts? Yep. No growth. Yeah. Whatsoever. All right. That's a problem. Amen. We're not supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. Improvement is the goal, y'all. Right. I can't say it no plainer. Mm -hmm. Improvement is the goal. Yeah. <laughs> and back to our text, James is, is challenging us. You know, most people count it all joy when it's all over with. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the test is over with is when I, when I like to be joyful. Mm -hmm. But James challenged us to have joy during our test. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Why? Because that, 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 that test is bringing about a result yes, sir. that is beneficial to us. Yes, and guess what? When we're going through this test, it's benefiting us. And guess what? When we're going through it the right way, we are glorifying our God. Amen. Amen. We are making light in this dark world. Amen. Amen. We are glorifying our God when we go and we, are to, we rise to the occasion right. in our test and in our challenge. We're glorifying the one who created us. Amen. And, it's an, and it's an, an, a natural reaction to have joy in the midst of pain. Mm -hmm. But the Christian life is filled with transforming us. Right, it's transforming our natural desires and our, re our reactions into unnatural ones. All right. Being tested in our life is no different, y'all. There are times when, you know, we see folks going through stuff, and we see it all the time, and we feel so bad for them, don't we? Yeah. We see folks, especially that we love and we know well, and we care about them, and we see them going through something, we always say things like, you know, my heart goes out to them. Right. Right. I, wish, I wish it could get better for them. I pray that it get better for them. Yeah. And then we don't say it sometimes, but we think it. I hope I ain't got to go through nothing like that. And we say things like that. I, 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 we, we feel like our heart's in the right place. And as much as we try to empathize with them, we can't fully really understand what they're going through. Especially if you've never gone through nothing like it before. If you've never experienced that trial, you can mean all the well, all the good that you can. Yeah. But you can't fully grasp what they're going through if you ain't never been there. Yeah, man. Okay. But my Lord, yes, sir. my Jesus, yeah. 
Him, on the other hand, he's able to sympathize with each of our tests in a way that can bring comfort in our lives. He knows what it's like to go through these things. The Bible said he was tested, he was tempted in every way. He is experienced. Whatever it is you're going through, yes, sir. unlike us, he knows exactly what you're going through, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And you know what is, what's interesting about that? Our Lord and Savior can understand, although he's omnipotent, yes, sir. he's all powerful, yet he knows what it's like to be tested. Yes, sir. Amen. Isn't that awesome to think about? Yes, sir. We have a Lord that is all powerful. He's all powerful. He didn't have to deal with none of this. Nope. But he came to this earth. Yes, he did. Put on flesh and blood, became a human being just like us. Right. And he dealt with all this. Yes, he did. And he understands when he didn't have to. Right. I li I, I, sometimes I can't put this in the words right, so I like to, I like to use what somebody else says. There was a German pastor, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but this, this pastor was around during, uh, he was German, he was around during the times of Adolf Hitler. Uh -huh. And I want to listen, I want you to listen to what he said about our Lord and Savior. He said, God lets himself be pushed out of the world onto the cross. Uh -huh. Listen to this. He is weak and powerless in the world. And that is precisely the way, the only way in which he is with us and helps us. Mm -hmm. The Bible makes quite clear that Christ helps us not by virtue of his omnipotence, but by virtue of his weakness and suffering. The Bible directs man to God's powerlessness and suffering. Only the suffering God can help. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds us that our Savior is able to fully sympathize with us yes, in our sufferings while still being sovereign over all. That's good, brother. Right, brother. That's good. He never stopped being large and in charge. Right. It never stopped. Mm -hmm. But because of what he allowed himself to go through, he can fully sympathize with our sufferings. Mm -hmm. He suffered his whole life. Amen. He has supreme power and authority, yet he can relate because he saved us through his sufferings. He saved us through his trials. He saved us through his tests. He saved us through his temptations. Isn't that awesome to think about? I just want to say, uh, say some encouraging words to you this morning. And I'm, I'm going to get real controversial here for a minute, just for a minute, because all of us got our, 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 our gear on. Most of us got our gear on this morning, our teams and everything. But I heard something recently that Coach Prime said. Mr. Deion Sanders. All right. He was talking about his son, Shadur. And he recently said this. He said, in my phone, he's up under grown. He's always been calm, cool, and collected. He was checking off at seven years old. And daddy was over there calling the plays for him and grooming him all the defenses first. Hmm. That's why we didn't flinch last week against Colorado State. Y'all stay with me now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he learned firsthand as a child how defenses are going to attack all right. because his dad dealt with, dealt with it all throughout his football career. Uh -huh. See, it's great to be coached by one of the best, mm -hmm. but eventually you have to put what you're taught to the test. That's true, That's true. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. This lets us know that we need to be learning this as child, as a child, right. mm -hmm. as a babe. Mm -hmm. We need to learn about the attacks that's going to come our way. Yes, sir. And the more we learn about it, and, the, and it is beautiful, when we, the younger we are, we learn about it, we know how to handle it when it comes our way. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's great to be coached by the best. It's great to be coached. We're coached by, we're, we're, we're coached by the Lord Jesus Christ. It don't get no better. No, but guess what? Eventually, you got to get out there and play the game. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, man. You can get coached all you want to. Yeah. You can go all over the film coverage you want to. But eventually, you got to play the game. Yeah. 
God tells us to expect trials. Yes, sir. We got to expect tests. It's not, it's not, it's not if, but it's, it's but when. Yes, sir. And see, anybody that tells you that this Christian life is easy, they are lying to you. Amen. It ain't easy. No, it's not easy. If somebody preached or told you that, somebody done told you wrong. Amen. It ain't nothing easy about this Christian walk. No, this, this is tough, y'all. Yes, and, 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 if, and, if, and if you don't believe me, listen to Jesus himself. He told his disciples in the world, you will have tribulation, Amen. but be of good cheer. I have overcome. overcome the world. Paul says in Acts chapter 14, we must, through many tribulations, enter into the kingdom of God. Peter said, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. It ain't easy living this life. It's not easy following our Lord and Savior. Some trials are going to happen in our life. Yes, and our Lord allows them. Yeah. Some things happen just because we're human. Yeah. We're fallible creatures, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're going to have accidents. Yeah. They're going to happen. Right. We're going to be sick, like I mentioned before. Yeah. We're going to have letdowns. Yeah, There's going to be disasters in our life just because we're human. Yes, sir. Right. But other trials and tests, they come because of who we are. Yeah. Other trials and tests come because who we belong to. Yeah, that's right. Don't you know the world is against us? Yes, sir. I got to pick it, pick it back off Brother Glenn this morning. Uh, again, once again, as he mentioned this morning, we are in war. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. It's not a game, y'all. <laughs> we are at war. The world is against us. Yes, sir. The enemy, yes, sir. Satan, is against us. Yes, so if we understand this, we got to realize that we're going to have battles Amen. in our life. Yes, sir. Just like the Jews in our text, they are scattered people. Yes, sir. They, are, they, they, are, they are scattered people. These were Jews that it, that it came over to belief in Christ Jesus. Right. Imagine how they live. And we are a lot like that. Right. A lot of us have left. We, we've left our old way of life. Yeah. But guess what? We're still surrounded by folks that haven't. Yeah, man. Just like these Jews, they are still around people that don't believe what they believe. All right. So positivity is a must Amen. in the face of opposition. Yes, sir. <coughs> We're scattered people and not God's sheltered people. Mm. Sorry, Brother Greg, but I got to say this. It don't change the song one bit. Mm. But we often sing a shelter in the time of storm. Uh -huh. And God is without a doubt our shelter. Uh -huh. But although he is our shelter, we are not sheltered children. Uh -huh. Think about that for a minute. He is our shelter, uh -huh. but we are not sheltered children. Uh -huh. Y'all understand that? Yes, you know how a sheltered child is? All right. We've seen sheltered children, haven't we? Huh? Amen, somebody. You know what I mean? I, I like what I read uh, recently about some sheltered children. Nowadays, they call it helicopter parenting. Well, well, well. Y'all see that parent that they don't let that child fall? They be at the playground and they be right there. Like a helicopter hovering around. They right with them. If they fall, they right there. You know what I mean? They ain't never scuffed a knee, ain't never scraped nothing. Ain't never dealt with nothing. Amen. So when they face adversity in life, especially in adulthood, they ain't ready. They lack all kind of social skills. They lack all this, the qualities that they need. But God ain't like that. Lord, have mercy. We can learn something from God's parenting. He is our shelter, but he doesn't shelter us right. as his children. He lets us get bumps and bruises. Yes, he let us get beat up sometimes. Yeah. When that bully come on the playground and beat us up, <laughs> God sometimes do us number. Mm. Right. Should have blocked. <laughs> Should have dipped. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's God sometimes. <laughs> Let me move on. I got all kind of thoughts in my head. 
<laughs> as a child of the Most High, it's imperative that we experience trials. We got to. Like a child, we got to mature. We can't throw temper tantrums. Amen. You know how you know how kids are, or when things don't go their way, and some adults. We got some adults that still still throw temper tantrums to this day. When they don't get their way, they get mad, boy. Some of them go to kicking and screaming and hollering, fussing and cussing. Yeah, that's how it is. You know why they like that? Because they don't have no patience. That's what our text is talking about. We, we, we need to have our, our faith tested. You know, over time, you will develop patience. You learn to remain calm under pressure. See, because immature people are always impatient. Right. Mature people are patient and continue pushing along. All right. No matter what they're going through. That's why we got to become mature. Christians, right? Yes. We can't remain immature and cry and pout when we don't get our way. Right. Things are going to happen in life. We got to develop patience. Right. We got to develop endurance. Amen. The only way the Lord can develop patience and quality in our lives is through trials yeah. and testing. That's how we gain endurance. That's how we gain strength. That's why it's important that you got to pray. We got to pray. Let us not dare forget that throughout the day. Find time to talk to the Lord. You got to have it each and every day. Let's don't take that blessing for granted. Talk to God each and every day. Make time. Like I tell you all the time, I talk to him when I'm driving. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just praying. I'm talking. You know what I mean? I'm telling him everything. I'm laying it all out because he know it all anyway. And it make me feel so much better when I'm just talking to him. Because my wife ain't got time to listen to me all the time. My children and my parents ain't got time to listen all the time. Y'all ain't got time to listen all the time. But guess what? God is ready anytime I'm ready. Anytime I want to talk to him, he is ready. He is available. He don't screenshot. He don't screen my calls like some of y'all do. I don't feel like talking right now. <laughs> don't let me get on some of y'all's text. Text three days later. But let me move on. <laughs> but in order for us to grow, y'all, you're not going to gain these qualities just by listening to me either. Mm-hmm. Not just by listening to Doc and, and paying attention in Bible study. And you're not going to gain these qualities just by reading your Bible. Like the, 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 old, the old example is used. The, the, the game isn't completed by, completed by remaining in the huddle. You got to come out that huddle eventually. You can't sit up under the, the, the coach's feet all the time. You can't just cry in the locker room. Eventually, you got to utilize what you've been taught. Right. You got to get out there and play. You can't ride the bench forever. Right. You got to play. Right. And what I love about the Lord, everybody get PT time. On, he don't just leave you sitting on the bench. And, and your parents wonder why come you ain't got in the game yet. God ain't like that. God, you, God utilize everybody. Yeah. That's why we like to reiterate around here, everybody got something to do. Yeah. Everybody, let me say that again. Everybody has something to do. Don't ever sit up here and think you ain't got nothing to do. You have something to do. And it ain't just up to me and Doc to figure out what it is. We need your help. What are your qualities? What are you good at? What do you want to learn about? What do you want to grow at? Then we can help you along the way. But don't feel like you're just going to sit there and not do anything. I know y'all don't want to hear this. And along the way, y'all, if you get in the game and you play and you have these trials, you have these tests, you're going to learn to trust God. That's when you learn to trust God. When you're put to the test, that's when you learn to trust God. That's when you, you, you rely on his word. That's when you become more obedient. The more we trust and obey, the more patient you become. The more confident you'll get. Even if you drug up and down the field like Colorado. <laughs> even if you drug up and down the field, even if you take a whooping, you still keep pressing forward. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You still keep pressing along. Right. And guess what? When you know who you belong to, yes, people ain't gonna like it. Amen. They ain't gonna like it. They gonna say things like you're too flashy. Yeah. They gonna say things like you're arrogant. Mm-hmm. 
They're going to want to take you down just because who you represent. They're going to want to take you down just because who you ride with. Amen, somebody? They ain't going to like that about you, but you can continue to remain confident. You continue to keep trusting the process because eventually you're going to have some wins. You're going to gain some yardage. You're going to have some blessings come your way, but you got to hang in there. So you keep on strutting. Yes, sir. Because you know who you roll with. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. And I don't want y'all to take this the wrong way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. You keep your head up high. Because yeah. you know who you're rolling with. Yeah. You know that God is in control of your life. And you're going to have haters. Yeah. They ain't going to like you because of what you represent. But you keep on playing. Yeah. You keep on being confident. Yeah. You will grow. You will have endurance. Yeah. And you know what? Over time, you will become joyful. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even in the midst of your test, even in the midst of your trial, you can still be joyful because you know who you're rolling with. Amen. Amen. When we get confident and cocky within ourselves, that's when you have problems. But you have trust and have faith in God. That's when you can hold your head high, y'all. Lord, have mercy. Because we learn to have faith. We know that through trials, he's with us. You know what I love about God, too? When you keep standing up in the midst of these trials and these tests, then you know who else will reveal himself to you? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal himself that I'm right here with you. I'm right here by your side. I got you. Come on, we going. We pushing forward. Amen. We got to level up, y'all. We got to level up in our lives. And I, I like this saying right here, outlook determines outcome. All right. So if you want to end with joy, you got to begin with joy. Yeah. If you want to end with joy, you got to start with joy. With joy. Yeah. That's why James says what he says in our text. Where there's faith, y'all, is always going to be tested. Yes, it is. Abraham isn't known as a father of faith for nothing. Right, right. right. God tested him yes, right. in order to increase his faith. Yeah. Abraham, leave home. Yeah. Leave your family. Yeah. Where are we going? I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. That's faith. Right. Amen, somebody? Right. Abraham, keep trusting in me, even though you're going through a famine. Yeah. I know you're hungry. Keep trusting in me. Right. Even though Pharaoh wants your wife, keep trusting in me. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Right. I'm going to bless you with children, even though you're up in age. Right. Your wife is up there, too. Right. But you trust me. I'm going to give you these children. Then I finally blessed you with a child, and guess what? I want you to go sacrifice him. But keep on trusting me. You see what he had to go through? And I'm just giving you a little bit. But you know what I want you to remember? You ain't no different. You ain't no different. The same things we read about that happened to the people of God, you're going to have the same encounters in your life. In order for your faith to be tested, you're going to have to go through some things. We ain't no different. We ain't no exception. God is still the same today as he was long ago. God always is going to test in order to bring out your best. See, the enemy tempts you to bring out the worst in you. But the Lord tests you to bring out your best. That's why we got to have a testing of our faith. You know what? When you're tested, when your faith is tested, it, pro it proves who you belong to. <laughs> Next time you're going through something, you're probably going through something right now. Prove to everybody and yourself who you belong to. Right. That's good. That's good. Are you a child of God All right. or are you a child of the enemy? Mm. All right. Even if y'all had been washed in the blood of Christ, yes, sir. who are you belonging to? Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of your trial. All right. When we're in our trials, y'all, and we're being tested, it proves that you believed. And that you kept on believing. Yes, sir. It proves that you repented of your past sins and you keep on repenting. Yes, sir. That you committed and you're not turning back Amen. to your sinful ways. Right. It can prove that you it proves that you confess the almighty name of Christ yes, Jesus yes, and that you keep on confessing them each and every day of your life. Yes, it proves that you've been baptized yes, and your sins have washed away. And it proves that you're still covered by the blood of Christ. Yes, it proves that we are patiently being perfected while we're following Christ Jesus all the way till our death. Yes, sir. Amen. Testing works for you, God, for you and not against you. Yes, Don't you know that the word trying is translated approval? Mm -hmm. right. When we're being tested, when we're being tried, you're getting God's approval. Yeah. Right now. Is God approving of us 
as we're going through these trials and tests in our lives, see, the enemy is going to continue to beat you down. Mm-hmm. He's beating you down right now. Yes, sir. He's going to beat some of you down as soon as you step out in this parking lot. All right, all right. But what you can't do is remain ignorant. Amen. That's what I mean by it's so important that we mature. Mm-hmm. He can't keep beating you down if you start learning of the Lord. All right, all right. When we learn of God and his purposes, he ain't going to be able to whoop you like that no more. Mm-hmm. Amen? Because you're going to see him coming. All right, all right. And you're going to know how to move. Yes, sir. You're going to know how to block. Yeah. You're going to know how to duck. Yeah. You're going to know how to jab. Amen, somebody? Right. That's how you're going to move because you're being tested. Yes, you're learning of God. And there's no, there's no substitute, y'all, for understanding mind. Right. We got a lot of ignorant Christians out here. Well, Why are you remaining ignorant? On, what are you doing about it? Mm. We ain't supposed to remain ignorant. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect something different to happen. Right. Right. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, and I'm about to let you go. For whatsoever, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning. Right. How many of us are learning? Right. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yes, sir. Stand on your feet this morning. Stand on your feet. I've said enough. I know you're comfortable in your jerseys and everything. I'm going to let you go. But I pray today that I've said something that will encourage you to keep learning. Amen. Don't stop learning. Right. Keep on learning of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Make time for God. He made time for you. Amen. He keeps on making time for you. Right. Make time for God. Learn of God. And guess what? When you keep learning of God, you'll be comforted by God. Yes, sir. Right. Be comforted by his word. And when you go through something, you get beat down. You get whooped sometimes, but you keep rising. Yes, sir. And you become better and better as the days goes by. All right, brother. If you're here today and you need to answer the gospel call and you haven't yet put Christ on in baptism, yes, do it today. Yeah, don't put it off. That's right. I can't say this enough. We don't know where death is. That's right. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. That's right. But we all going to stand before him one day. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I want to stand before him in peace. Yeah, man. Amen, somebody. Yeah. I don't want to be shaking in my boots. I don't want to be crying. Amen. 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 If I'm crying, I want it to be ha- tears of happiness. Yeah. Joy. Amen. Because I know what's waiting on me. Right. Don't be the other way. Right. Amen. Right. That's why God sends his powerful angels on the day of judgment. Right. You can't run. No, you you going to go. Yes. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're here today and you need prayer, ask for prayer today. Yeah. Believe in the power of prayer. Yes, it changes things. Show enough. Yes, We're going to have a verse of a song. And if you need to respond, do it right now. Later, my day. Mm-hmm. Long. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere.